dreaming of owning a property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood, EJ Investments Sanyang Seaview Estate is the best choice you have been waiting for. Our Sanyang Seaview Estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hop of Brusubi roundabout and into the heart of nature where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family. You can buy a finished four bedroom story with five year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two year payment plan an option. With over 300 homes, you will enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage, modern electrification with solar street lights, gated entrance with security post, and a breath-catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Sea View Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325-9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property. Well, um, our two countries have had a very long relationship uh, spanning over 300 years. And uh, the relationship has been healthy. Uh, we want to take it to higher heights. We want to deepen this relationship. We want to widen that, this relationship for the benefit of our two countries. Um, of course, we share a lot in common today in terms of uh, 
politics, in terms of the economy, in terms of the um, challenges we face as, as leaders. So we are trying to, we have compared notes and we have identified areas where we can work together, share contacts and share ex our experiences. This is basically what this uh, meeting has been about. Thank you. Um, I think my, my friend have said it all. It's all about uh, our relationship, especially at the bilateral level. I think it is very, very important. Gambia, our policy is we want to open up to the world, and this is part of what we are doing. And also, we seize the opportunity also to thank Sierra Leone, because during the impasse, Sierra Leone they took a leading role in solving the problem in the Gambia. And I think we need to commend them for that and thank them also. Uh, and also, we discuss about the leadership. In Africa, if you look at the leadership, we have a young leadership. And that young leadership, they have a big responsibility in moving this country, continent forward. I think these are basically the areas that we discuss. Um, Mr. Kujabi, yes. Identify yourself. I am Mr. Kujabi, from the Commission Department, Gambia Gate, government minister. My question goes to the President of Sierra Leone. And he came to the presidency with a object uh, with targets. And one of the targets is fighting corruption. What are some of the um, mechanisms that we put in place to fight corruption? Well, before even I took up office, um, we've had an institution called the ACC, which is the Anti-Corruption Commission. Um, it's been fighting, uh, we've legislated, but then I think, uh, in my opinion, or from our own diagnosis, what was missing was the political will to push forward the agenda for anti-corruption. We have given them the freedom they require to be able to prosecute those who are found wanting, and we are also giving them support. But besides that, what we have done, or in addition to that, is we have set up a commission of inquiry because our people elected us to office because they wanted change, and um, corruption had become a fashion. And we know it's a threat to national development and national security. So we have set up a commission of inquiry, which has started. And it's just an investigation so that people can give stewardship for their time in office. That has started and um, um, it resonates very well with the people who elected us. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Thank you very much, my name is Your Excellencies, uh, you spoke about uh, the areas that you can get here. The areas we have discussed, education, of course, a lot of Gambians have passed through Sierra Leone as far as education is concerned. And there are other areas also trade, trade and investment. These are areas we want to cooperate in uh, moving this relationship forward. Because we know very well Sierra Leone has a lot of resources. I think if we are in partnership, that will help us in this relationship. And both countries can benefit from that relationship. These are the areas we, we discuss. In, in, in addition, Gambia does very well in tourism. There's a lot to learn from Gambia. And uh, I think uh, in West Africa, Gambia is one of the favorite destinations for tourism, for tourists. So we are also trying to learn from the Gambia what what has been put in place in terms of infrastructure to attract tourists here. Of course, education has always been a force, uh, a binding force between our two countries. And uh, we are happy that a lot of progress has been made on this side. We don't have a lot of Gambians going on that side again for education. But most of us have colleagues here we went to school with who are Gambians. And we want to see what sort of um, uh, how we can strengthen that relationship also at the educational level. Fisheries, governance, and a lot of other issues uh, 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 we have discussed are of importance to us because we know that when you compare notes, there, there are always uh, differences, but you learn from, from, from what is happening uh, at different ends of governance in the two countries. Um, the good governance and of course human development. These are the 
that's one of the things that people use when they say are not used when they're achievable by African governments. Do you think there is scope for African politics? Yes, of course. Um, th there is always a doubt about politicians. They say we say things and we don't do them. We make a lot of promises and we don't fulfill them. Um, I staked my whole presidential campaign in Sierra Leone on human capital development. For me, uh, the Sustainable Development Goal 17 of them set by the UN cannot be achieved without quality education, a strong educational base to form the basis for improving and enhancing the human being to be the, at the center of development. So what I did in the very first six months was to uh, launch the free quality education pro pro program in Sierra Leone, which is well underway. Uh, from pre-primary to the end of high school, you can actually go to school for free. We are not only making access free, we also are making uh, the quality of education competitive enough so that people or our kids can go to school and uh, be able to compete with others around the world. We are making uh, core textbooks available to them and uh, later on we'll be giving them uniform. So nobody has reason to stay at home. The poorest of the poor can gain from that by accessing school and getting quality education. For us, that forms the foundation, a solid foundation for development. I, I think yeah. South Africa, we should be very, very careful because the dynamics, the dynamics are changing. Because we are confronted with a lot, a lot of challenges. And these challenges put at us and, and worse. Now the dynamics are changing. Africa is now following the trend of democracy. Good law, good laws, rule of law. This is the trend we are now following. So I think that is an indication that Africa is now serious. We are building our institution. And if you build your institution, the institution will dictate everybody. Not the president now, it's important. Not who is in office, but it's the institutions that are very, very important. I think that's what we are doing as, as, as of now. Yes. Yes. Uh, good morning, Your Excellency. So my name is Mohamed Jalo, and I'm from the Ghana Ministry of Intelligence and Services. Uh, now, uh, I have a question for, uh, for you to start with the uh, Interim President Bill. I know you must have discussed about security, uh, council, UN Security Council reforms, and we understand Sierra Leone plays a very important role in enhancing the African common position in the reform of the Security Council. Now, in the course of your discussions, have you agreed uh, on anything that will put the agenda for UN uh, reforms, particularly as, as far as Africa is concerned, particularly Africa's participation in the UN, particularly the UN, uh, the permanent membership of the UN Security Council? Definitely, yes. Um... As chair of and coordinator of the uh, C10, I have always led the process for advocating for the African common position. That is for us to have two seats at the Security Council level. We've never had prob problems or challenges with the support of uh, the Gambia. So the African common position is what we stand by and we continue to stand by that. We will insist to make sure that the 1.2 billion people in Africa have representation. That is what the African common position is. At the highest level, that is at the Security Council level. And uh, the Gambians have been very supportive. As a matter of fact, Africa as a whole is supportive of that position. And uh, we just reiterated our, our shared um, 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 opinion about that to continue to, to, to make sure that we advocate for that position and make sure that it actually happens within the, the Security Council of the UN. I think Africa is speaking one voice. The message is the same from Africa. We are all united as far as that message is concerned. Reforms of the Security Council. That is a message that is clear and it was even part of my speech when I was at the United Nations. Reforms of the Security Council, that's what we are calling for. We are calling for, for equality. We want Africa to be recognized. We want Africa to be given position as far as the Security Council is concerned. You know, for, for, for accountability, for transparency, you understand, for fairness. I think this, uh, this, is, this is the message from Africa. And everybody is on board. That makes us strong. Because we feel that if we are together, we are strong. The message is the same. Everybody speaking the same language. Thank you so much. Can I have...
Keba, and then that will be after we have the last one. Thank you. Your Excellency, my name is Keba. I come from the <coughs> uh, We start with the uh, location we directed from Mr. Mundo. Um, Sierra Leone has a war as its background in Gambia right now. We, although we don't, we don't have war, but then there was the human rights atrocities. You know, that led to the commission of TRS. Uh, you know, but we understand that Sierra Leone was subsidized in putting it in order after the country. Well, uh, I think uh, we've had uh, different experiences and it is always good to use your experiences as a way to chart the future. We decided to have the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and um, people took part in that. I was there myself and uh, the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission have been properly documented and has guided us to, to be able to move forward as far as um, development is concerned in that country. Uh, it actually acts as a guardrail to make sure that we don't go back into the bad habits that led to the war, the causes of the war, uh, like bad governance, injustice, corruption. So in fact, corruption, the Human Rights Commission and the, the Anti-Corruption Commission the Human Rights Commission are all as a result of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which um, actually recommended that in order not to go back to war, we needed to make sure that we have systems and um, institutions in place that we prevent, like uh, my brother and colleague said, institutions, not individuals, because we come and go. But the institutions are there to make sure that we stay within the confines of uh, what, what is generally accepted around the world, to make sure that nobody's human rights is abused and that, that good governance is, uh, the, uh, is the norm. And also to make sure that um, uh, we, we honor the democratic responsibility which, uh, and accountability, make sure that uh, we account for monies that are given to us or we take charge of. Thank you so much. Can I have the last one from you? My name is Abraham Jor. I'm a freelance journalist and associate professor of report. Uh, you know, as you said, rightly put it, uh, Sierra Leone experienced war and was able to uh, move on despite uh, many challenges. Uh, we are, Gambia is emerging from two decades long of uh, dictatorship. So, what are the main uh, lessons Gambia can learn from Sierra in order to navigate this transition process? You pay, you, pay, you pay attention to the future. You can groom. Uh, I mean, grown about the, 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 the ease of the past, but learn from them and try to move forward. Because every nation is going forward in the world. Um, uh, it's good to have a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It is not meant to go back and uh, uh, open up new wounds, but it will definitely bring out certain lessons uh, which you can incorporate in your governance structure, in the way things are done, in the way people relate to one another so that the, 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 the mistakes of the past are not repeated. I think that is the most important thing. Um, Gambia should make the effort to catch up with the rest of the world. Like Sierra Leone, we know we are lacking behind. And um, we cannot sit and just grumble about the past. We are now making efforts to move ahead by learning from the past. Yeah, I think you know, we have discussed these things that Gambia should learn from Sierra Leone. After a bitter war, they were able to reconcile and move on. I think we have a lot to learn. We passed through a dictatorship of 22 years. Our democracy has just started. And Sierra Leone, they are building on their democracy. Governments have changed hands in about two to three times. So that means Sierra Leone is accepting democracy. I think this is the only way we can move this continent forward. And Gambia, we should learn from those people that have moved on. Countries like South Africa, Sierra Leone, countries like Rwanda, they have moved on. And I see no reason why Gambia we cannot move on. But our main focus is to build our institution, as I said. The Truth and Reconciliation is on. Constitutional Review Commission is on. These are reform process to change the mindset. Because the mindset is a big problem. The system was polluted. And in changing that, you have to change the mindset. But today we have a guide, that is our national development plan. Everybody, even the primary school student, 
knows about the national development. That is the guide for the government. That guide is up to 2021. <coughs> all of this is inclusive in that national development. So these are the things that we are, we are focused on, but we are still more than willing to learn from other countries. They said if you learn, if you learn and listen, you can always progress. So we cannot thank the mother Bio enough for coming to the Gandhi. He is a brother and he is a friend. We have a lot to learn from Sierra Leone. That's why today we are here together to share experiences and learn from each other and collaborate also and move our continent forward. But we are very hopeful because Africa now the direction is the same. Everybody is thinking about good governance, everybody is thinking about democracy. This is the only way we can move this continent forward. We've got other countries that have succeeded. America, you know, the West, they follow the same trend. So we have to follow the same to succeed. But it's a young leadership, and I think this leadership, we are very, very innovative. Innovative in such a way that we want to develop this continent. And nobody can do it for us. It's our ultimate responsibility. And we have no excuse. Now we have capacity. All of you are highly educated people. So I think the media also is doing a big, big job, you know, so, and, and I think that is healthy. It's healthy for democracy. So thank you very much once more again uh, for coming. We are really pleased and we are excited. Uh, Bureau, once more again, I thank you for coming to the Gandhi. Looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you, Your Excellency. At this point, we'll end this uh, press briefing, and we will kindly urge our Excellencies to join the team out there so that we continue to have a family photo there. Just right where you're standing, we'll just then book the two chairs there and then you can property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood, EJ Investments Sanyang Seaview Estate is the best choice you have been waiting for. Our Sanyang Seaview Estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hop of Brusubi roundabout and into the heart of nature where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family. You can buy a finished four bedroom story with five year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two year payment plan option. With over 300 homes, you will enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage, modern electrification with solar street lights, gated entrance with security post, and a breath-catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Sea View Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325 -9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property.